Sonic, the heart of your system. In today's video we will perform some experiments again. So this video was based on an idea back from I think two or three months ago where I was presenting a Peltier element, so a tech cooler for water cooling, where I basically pre uh, presented a water block where a tech element was built in, so the tech element was cooled by the water and then the tech was cooling down the CPU. And a, lo a lot of you commented in the video down below and said, hey, why don't you just use Peltier elements to cool the water itself and not the CPU directly? And that's what we will do today. So I ordered this nice box from AliExpress because I figured out that this was much cheaper than buying tech elements and water cooling stuff here in Germany. So basically what we have here just some set actually we have 12 sets in total so we have 12 sets like this so a base plate a cooler on top so aluminium finned cooler where we can mount this 40 millimeter fan we have a water block that goes in between and then we have the peltier element that goes on top of the water block and then the peltier element will be cooled by the aluminium finned heatsink on top. So obviously it's not a lot of surface, it doesn't really look like it would cool anything, but the performance of this tech, it's a TEC 112706, it's a 60 watt Peltier element and yeah we have 12 of those in total so I think 12 times 60 watt should be capable of cooling down some water quite a bit I think. So we will just assemble 12 of those sets on one plate and see if we can do a DIY chiller this way because um, this is a much cheaper solution than just using uh, professional chillers that use phase change cooling such as in a refrigerator that they are much more efficient, they have a much better cooling obviously but they are also much more expensive and obviously with this if we have 720 watt power consumption it's quite a lot, it's a, it's a significant power consumption but I think um, the price of purchase is a lot lower. So just those 12 sets costs about $200, which I think is quite affordable. And then we have to spend some more money on uh, like tubing and the base plate, which we will use. Then of course the water cooling gear. But I think in total, the whole chiller would cost something below $300. So I think it's still fairly cheap. So we will just start to assemble this thing and then see how it performs. So we prepared this acrylic plate to mount the cooling elements like this and I will drill the mounting holes for them now. So we prepared the acrylic plate so far with the screws for mounting the cooling elements and we also already put on some Armaflex AF uh, insulation tape. So looks like this. It's just some black insulation foam tape we use for extreme overclocking purposes. You can use it for um, insulating um, water cooling pipes or some kind of GPU containers or, or things like that. So just cutting off a small piece. Then we stick it to the acrylic plate in the middle where the water block will sit eventually. So the water block will just go on top like this. Those are some very cheap aluminium water cooling blocks and typically you would not put them into a cooling loop together with a copper block like a GPU or CPU block that we have in normal custom water cooling but for today's experiment it will be fine. Also you just notice those marks on the outside of the cooling block like holes which they closed afterwards so you can assume that the structure internally is also not very big so it's basically just structure where the water will go like this but it should be sufficient for um, taking away the heat from the tech. 
So it's time to mount the text. We have to put some thermal paste in between the water cooling block and the text. Also, obviously, between the tech and the heat block on top, the aluminum finned heatsink. There is some very cheap thermal paste included. I think it's just some ceramic based thermal paste. So conductivity will not be very good. So we will just use some cryonaut instead. Uh, which is kind of funny because the cryonaut tube itself, I think, costs um, a third of the whole cooling solution. So, yeah, but oh well, saving every degree. All the cooling elements are now mounted on the acrylic plate and it was kind of funny because the acrylic plate really started to bend under the mounting pressure of the cooling elements. We really screwed them down hard to make sure we have a proper mounting pressure on the uh, tech elements to the uh, cooling elements. And then, yeah, as I said before, the acrylic plate really started to bend. So we put some additional 10 millimeter thick acrylic parts underneath to give it a little bit more stability, but now it looks really nice and really satisfied so far with uh, the result. So the next step would be the tubing. I have those tubes for the input or for the inlet and outlet. So basically it's a 10 millimeter outside diameter and uh, eight millimeter inside diameter. So it's a quite rare tubing. You wouldn't use those these days for any kind of custom water cooling, but let's say 10 years ago, it was kind of common to use such a small inner diameter. But because I couldn't find an adapter, I had to make an adapter myself. So just used this piece of fitting to connect the 10.8 tubing and then just for 16, 10 um, diameter in the end. So this will be for inlet and outlet connecting here and here. And then for the connection between the cooling elements themselves, we will just use the same kind of tubing. And then the last step will be connecting all the cables. Luckily we have 12 volt everywhere. So we have 12 volt for the fans and we also have 12 volt for the techs. So that's kind of convenient, kind of easy to connect. Still it's 720 watt for the techs plus some kind of watts for the fans. It shouldn't be that much for the fans. Still, um, I think some very thick cables will, will be required for 720 watts just to connect all of them together. And in the end we will connect all of those elements to those cables which will be eventually be connected to the PSU. So those are just the PCI Express connectors for the PSU. Four of them in total. So I think it should be fine connecting 720 watt to four 8 pin connectors of the PSU. So that's what I have to do now.
One day later and the chiller is almost ready on the table, I would say. As you can see, everything is wired up. So all the Peltier elements are connected. Also the fans are connected. I also connected the tubing already, filled the system with water because I wanted to check if everything is uh, sealed or some, if something is leaking because those tubes are actually really, really soft. And I was not sure if there was something on here that would leak, but so far it looks really good. So we have one closed cooling loop that goes to the system over here where we have a 9900K and then we have this EK um, reservoir pump combination. So this is just one cooling loop and the pump plus the, the chiller is connected with one PSU and then we have a second PSU just for the system so we can basically just use them independently and test it first and see how it goes. So Looks pretty good, I would say. All the fans are spinning. We can see there's still a little bit of air inside the system, which is not really a problem. It will just be gone after a few minutes. And I can also already straight feel the heat on here. So those heat sinks are really getting warm. And I'm also a bit concerned, I have to say, because estimating that those are 12 60 watt Peltier elements it's quite a lot of heat and removing all this heat with those small fans I'm not really sure how well it will go taking into account that we also have to remove the heat from the 9900k out of the system with those fans so it will be quite tricky I think to have it running on a very good temperature we can also just check the heat sink temperature quickly so if we just check how warm one of those top heat sinks gets. You can see we're straight at something close to 60 degrees Celsius and one of those tags can only achieve a delta of about 60 degrees Celsius or 60 Kelvin. So I would say the closest we can get or the, the coldest we can get in temperature would be zero degrees Celsius, which I think will not be possible because we have the heat source of the 9900K. So I'm not sure how well it will go cooling wise, but we will just see how it will go. Also, we can simply check the power consumption quickly. So this is the cable for the fans where we have 1.4 amps, not really much, not even, not even worth mentioning actually. And this is one of the cables for the tech, so the bottom row, which is 15 amps. And then we have another cable to another row where we also have almost 15 amps, so it's 30 amps total times 12. We have 360 watt power consumption right here with the chiller, so we have to remove 360 watt of heat with those small fans. I think this is going to be a challenge, so I will just keep it running for two or three minutes to see if we can cool down the water a bit and then we will fire up the 9900K. So I've been testing this chiller for quite a while now and unfortunately the performance is not as good as expected. So I just kept the water circuit running and just the water flowing through the thing without uh, being attached to the CPU. But unfortunately the water temperature would not go below like 20 or 21 degrees Celsius. So it was slightly below room temperature, but not really much. And also considering that there was no heat source, it's really not a good result I would say. But the problem is mainly that the temperature from the Peltier elements is too high. So the problem is that the cooling solution is just not efficient enough. So we have to replace those fans and also the heat sinks that are currently cooling the tech elements. Because if we check the temperature of the heat sinks and it's like 60 or 70 degrees Celsius and we know that the tech would eventually have a delta um, of about 60, 70 degrees Celsius, then we cannot really go lower than room temperature. So the solution will be that we will replace the fans and also the heat sinks in the next video. So it will take about two or three weeks. I'm still waiting for the replacement cooling solution to arrive at my place. And then we will yeah, modify this thing and then, then I think we will have a proper and good cooling solution. So until then, see you soon.